In many situations, lab color mode should be the first choice for advanced digital image editing. The use of the lab color mode makes many difficult tasks extremely simple and efficient, giving amazing results. It's a reliable way to get much quality, spending less time. That's why lately more and more Photoshop users find it beneficial to use lab color mode. Of course, there are still many who for some reasons hesitate. I think that's a wrong approach. But worse than unuse is the misuse of this Photoshop function. Although this can compromise an entire editing workflow, there are not so few who make this mistake. That's the reason I've decided to unfold here some key aspects that must be known to avoid the misuse of the lab color mode. What is the utility of the lab color space in Photoshop? Photoshop Lab Color Mode is based on Cialab, a standardized color space adopted in 1976 by CIE, the French acronym for International Commission on Illumination. Unlike RGB or CMYK spaces used to model the color output of physical devices, Lab is a device-independent color space designed to approximate how the human eye perceives color. It's a mathematical description of all perceivable colors, using three dimensions, a lightness component L and two color components A for the green magenta and B for blue-yellow. The coding of the luminance and color are strictly separated. As a standardized device-independent color space, Lab can provide a system for translating color from device to device. In Photoshop, color management systems use Lab internally as a reference to convert the color values from one mode to another without significantly altering the results. Also, Lab separates the lightness from the color components, so it allows to edit individually the lightness values and the color components. On the other hand, in Lab mode cannot be accessed all the Photoshop functions such as some filters or adjustments. Therefore, when working in lab, the workflow may require repeated conversions to RGB and back. It's presumably that this could alter the color information. Perhaps that's one of the reasons why some are cautious about using lab mode. The reluctance comes from the early age of Photoshop when the bitmap image storage and processing were limited to 8 bits per channel. In such a situation, because a lab bitmap image requires more data per pixel to achieve the same precision as an RGB or CMYK image, the conversion to lab and back strongly affects the color information. But now, with the generalized 16 bit per channel and floating point support, the effect is expected to be significantly diminished. A simple experiment could help us evaluate it. See here an 8-bit RGB image layer on which I randomly placed 10 sampler points. The layer was uniformly filled with a single color, that's why all points indicate the same values. Now convert the image to lab mode. As can be seen, certain points show slight deviations from the initial values. This suggests the conversion has induced an image noise. A noise not very evident, but as you can see and the numbers say, a noise that certainly exists. Converting back to RGB, the noise and thus the deviation from the initial values remain present. What happens if these RGB to lab and lab to RGB conversions are repeated several times? At each step, the initial color values are more and more distorted. The histogram is adjusted accordingly. What you see here is the result of three go to lab and back to RGB consecutive conversions. This happens when working with 8 bit images. Let's resume the same procedure with a 16 bit image. As you can see, we can endlessly apply consecutive RGB lab RGB conversions. The image remains unaffected. 
Theoretically, working only with 16 bits images might be the best approach. But in practice, you may encounter some constraints. In Photoshop, not every filter and adjustment is available in 16 bit mode. A lab color mode has the same problem. You also must keep in mind that the file size of a 16 bit image is much larger than that of an 8 bit image. If your computer is not performing so well and is running too slowly, some tasks could take more time than your patience can accept. For this reason, or if you find that the filter or adjustment you want is unavailable, you may need to switch back to the RGB 8-bit image. You'll have to do the same if you need to save the image in a format that does not support lab 16-bit. What can happen if you do it? If you switch first to 8-bit, the noise appears. Then, when converting to RGB, the noise may even increase. Using the reverse sequence, I mean convert RGB first and then switch to 8-bit image, the problem disappears. You must note that when the modes are changing, all the adjustments layers in the image will be discarded or the image layers must be merged. This fact is often evoked by the lab skeptics. I consider the benefit of using lab color space worth spending a few minutes to organize your workflow in such a way to overcome this inconvenience. It's also true that in some situations the quality losses after a very limited number of color mode conversions of an 8-bit image are not so evident and can be overlooked. But the effect intensity cannot be evaluated a priori and you can lose the control of the editing process. Converting to lab is a simple task, it's not worth the risk of refusing it. All this can be summed up in an essential golden rule you must follow to avoid the misuse of the lab color mode in Photoshop. Don't change the color mode of an image as long as it is not a 16-bit image. In other words, always switch to 16-bit before changing an image to lab color mode. To return from a 16-bit lab image to an 8-bit RGB one, always convert first to RGB and then switch to the 8-bit image, never in reverse order. Let's take a look at this image. It was obtained by processing the original image under the rule mentioned above. The result is a lab 16-bit image which contains in this group of layers the information generated by the process. As you know, this image format does not allow access to some Photoshop features. For instance, here we have to use camera or filter to remove these purple fringes. The camera row is available only for RGB images. Can we use the filter without compromising the lab structure of the file? Yes, there is a smart way to do it. First, convert this group into a smart object. Then switch to RGB mode. Don't flatten and don't rasterize. If you need some other filters available only for an 8-bit image, you can make now this conversion without any restriction. Now, with all Photoshop functions available, apply camera row to this smart object and remove the undesirable fringes. You can make any other corrections if you need. We have now an RGB 8-bit image file. But the smart object is smart enough to preserve inside intact all the previous 16-bit lab information. We can access it with a simple double click. 
If needed, it can be made any modification in this internal PSB file. Save and close it. The smart object will update and store all lab 16-bit information. I hope all the above convinced you to work in lab color space as often as possible. As you saw, it is not difficult at all to avoid the misuse of this valuable facility. Furthermore, with the help of the smart object, all the lab color space restrictions can be easily overcome. That's all for today's episode. I hope it is useful for you. If you liked it, click the like button and share this video with your friends. Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Ring the bell to get notified about the future episodes. If you have any comments and questions, leave them in the section below. I will be glad to answer promptly.